People expect linear progression with training, but it's not how it works, especially not with flexibility training due to the different way that the nervous system is adapting and the way that a good flexibility program is constructed, you can expect to go forwards and backwards before seeing big breakthroughs. What's up everyone? In case we haven't met, my name's Rad Burmeister. I am one of the co-founders of Unity Gym and the UMS Unified Movement System along with my brother, uh, Yanni Burmeister, who I'm joined with today, and Richard, who is behind the uh, mixing box. We're also joined by Phil, our resident physiotherapist and all-round good-looking volleyball player here. Um, <laughs> Look, guys, if you haven't tuned into us before, we're the gym that turns driven people into athletes. We've got a really revolutionary program here where we make people strong, flexible, and fit. If you want to know how we do it, grab one of the free blueprints. We've got the strength blueprint, the flexibility blueprint, and the nutrition blueprint. They've all got life-changing lessons that if you apply them to your training, you are going to see some serious improvements. And if you haven't done so already, come and join our private Facebook group. It's called the UMS Movement Mastermind, and it's where we record these podcasts live so that we can answer your questions in real time. And uh, for those of you that are watching live, please say hello. Let us know where you're watching from so we can give you a shout out. I can see we've got Vinnie Brown on the uh, on the feed, and we've got Lee Clements. Um, how you doing, guys? And uh, how are you doing, Yanni and Phil? Doing good. Doing good. It's good that we have Vinnie Brown on the show this morning because he is pretty much the reason why uh, we're doing this <laughs> series. We? And um, and that's a good plug for the UMS Movement Mastermind private Facebook group because uh, <coughs> he asked a question last week, how do you deload for stretching or does a deload period apply? People that do our programs know that we are big on program periodization and that includes the, the uh, sort of a ramp loading uh, methodology where we peak uh, on the fifth week of our mesocycle and then we have a deload week where we reduce the total volume of the workout and it was a great question. Great question. Great question because uh, when you train flexibility properly, properly, we're going to go into uh, that a lot deeper today. Proper. Proper flexibility training. Uh, it is load on the body. I mean, any stretching. And Phil, <laughs> Phil um, r was really the first person to say this on the podcast um, many, many moons ago, uh, that, that stretching is a load on the body. It's a load on the muscles. It's a load on the nervous system. And uh, it, it, it should be treated as such, you know, similar to strength training. Why don't you just um, preface by giving us a little bit more info <laughs> on that. And uh, yeah, yeah, preface it for us. Uh, I'll yeah. <laughs> I'll face it right out of here. Um, before I do, I'll just say that I'm an enthusiastic volleyball volleyball player, but not not a particularly good one. But Look, I'll, guys, I'll, I'll take it. Guys, on that note, <laughs> think literally think of that amazing scene in Top Gun yep. without the the body lube and a little bit more body hair, <laughs> and <laughs> with the speedos. <laughs> hey, budgie smugglers. I've, budgie I've got, smugglers. I've got brand identity. Um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I think the most important thing to understand there is that. 100% like the body will adapt to what you're spending time doing and, and, and stretching is a like a serious you know when you're doing it you feel uncomfortable often it's like this kind of satisfying pain but it's it's a sense that the body is like hey this is our, like we're pushing limits here like this is you know it's it's a stress on the muscle and and it kind of goes back to that show that um, we talked about on Wednesday where basically people have in their mind that stretching is some like magical therapeutic cure-all thing but no it's an, it's a it's a load that we've got to get right just like at a, like optimal strength training for rehab, just like, you know, optimal sort of cardiovascular like um, overload for fitness training. The stretching load is the load that we're applying to get mobility yeah. and flexibility. Yeah, and this is, it's interesting because this is probably one of the things, there's a couple of things that we get trolled for the most. The, hands down, the, the, the best one is the loaded pike stretch. But <laughs> yeah, we, we, we got we got a good one yesterday. We had a, didn't cra we? We had a cracker yesterday. Uh, what uh, what was his name? Karate Dash Twenty. Karate Dash Two One was trying to say <laughs> how absolutely <laughs> disgusting this stretch was and how bad it was for the. Uh, but tried. but I don't want I don't want you to go down that rabbit hole. Oh, I but that. I want to relive it. But uh, <laughs> but the thing that this probably the second thing we get uh, trolled for the most is when we say statements like. You know, you you only you should we, we get the best results uh, and in our experience, we get the best results from 
doing middle splits training only once per week. And then people run with that and say, oh my God, Unity Gym says you should only stretch once a week and they get amazing results from that. And uh, what a crock of shit, you know, blah, blah, blah. Sorry, I swore. Uh, but sorry, not sorry. But um, you, you know, you I don't want you to misunderstand what we're saying here. Like when we say uh, you should l manage your load with stretching. It that we are not saying, and when and when you should only do middle splits once per week, we're not saying you should only stretch once per week. No. You know, why don't you why, why don't you um, tell us your? Well, this is a good idea. Tell us your stretching split. Like w what at the I moment, do. what we're doing right now in the gym or what you're doing, just to give people an understanding of how much we stretch every week. Yeah. So I'm doing the flexibility masterclass, which is getting released today. That's what I do. That's why we're doing it. Um, and what I do is um, there's a lot of consideration that goes into what stretches I do on what day, because it has to work um, synergistically with the strength training. Um, to not detract from your ability to recover between sets of strength training so that you can still produce maximal force. And if that m sounded like a head, you know, s swirl to you, it is. It's taken me years and years and years of trial and error to figure out how to put this stuff together in a way that gets really good results, like what we do in the UMS. So when I do bent arm strength on Monday and Thursday, I so the, the all of my strength training m involves gripping, uh, pushing and pulling with my arms. So my flexibility can't interfere with that. So I do front splits, uh, pancake and pike flexibility on Monday and Thursday. Um, and that's it. That's when I do those two things. And that also gives me enough time to recover from those two. Um, then when I do my lower body strength training, so on um, Tuesday I'm doing squats and on uh, Friday I'm doing deadlifts, I do my upper body flexibility, so for my shoulders. So I'm doing external rotation, internal rotation, shoulder flexion, shoulder extension, and that's also when I work on the back bridge um, on those days. <clears throat> then on Wednesday, when I do my straight arm scapular strength training, that's when I do my middle splits, um, and then that's it. That's, uh, that's all I do um, in a week, um, yep. but they're full on workouts. It's not like, you know, there's, there's um, sometimes six different exercises that I'll do um, for flexibility. Um, some of it is stretching, some of it is strength training, some of it looks like strength training, some of it you have weights and you do sets and reps of it, but it's end range strength training. And this is, I think, um, the, the message that I wanna give today is that the, 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 a true flexibility training program is a bloody workout. Like it's not something that you just add in here and there or you, you know, and, and, and I reckon this is probably the main reason why so many people walk around saying, oh, I just can't get flexible. I've tried and I can't get flexible. But that know? was our first big breakthrough. When we, wrote, when we wrote the flexibility blueprint, which is now, you know, the thing that we give away for free for people to, to get their first exposure to what we do, um, and give them, a, give them a taste of the lessons that we teach. That was the first big breakthrough that we had. The very first big breakthrough was when we said, all right, we need to stop treating flexibility as something that we just do at the end of what we're doing if we feel like it. Or, and we, or at the start. Or at the start, like we just doing. as a warm up. Yep. And we have to treat it as a workout. So yep. I, I'm going to, this is part of my workout, not yep. just a little bit at yeah. the start you, or the end. You won't become flexible on accident, like by yeah. accident. It's, it's and it just be. makes so much sense when you, when you put it like that for the first time. It's like yeah. saying, I want to get really fit, but I'm, you know, like I'll just skip. I'm going to do it playing two. table tennis. Yeah, or or or, or, or I'm just <laughs> going to or I'm just going to get a skipping rope and skip in. for two <laughs> minutes at the start of my workout, and hopefully I'll get fit over time from doing that. You know. Yeah, and it, it takes a real like buy-in and intention. You've got really like we've done a lot about kind of goal setting at the beginning of the year, especially, but you've got to make it like give yourself a real you know driving passion to do this because it does take a solid amount of time and it does and as Yanni said it like it's not this linear thing where you just kind of click go on the thing and then you'll just be off to the moon um, and doing your you know rad style Van Damme <laughs> like middle splits under weight stretches like it, it, it takes a whole lot of time and, and intention and like you need that sort of um, and clear path and, and that's something that I've like with my goals around you know playing a lot of beach volleyball um, surfing quite a lot and then trying to get strength training in as well as well as like triathlon sports like it's challenging for me because it's like mm. I know that for to get really great results in stretching I need to take some priorities away from other areas and put it into stretching so it's just mm. so clear to understand like you've got to 
yeah. yeah, really align it with so what you want. Let me just jump in real quick. I, I want to say that this is a sidetrack, but it's something that we've spoken about before a lot that I that I believe in really strongly. What Phil just said there highlights why I always say. You, when you we, you create your goal, but then when you train, you have to detach from the goal and focus on the process. Because if you don't, with what everything that Phil just said highlighted it, it if, if all you're focused on is the goal of what you want and all you look at is what you have, you, you'll just stop. You just get really... I, I saw a comment on our on our YouTube channel. Uh, I can't remember the, the avatar or the, or the person, the individual's name or the name they got their tag on, on YouTube. But they said, I've been trying to get the middle splits for a, about 12 months. If, if I don't get it I by the end one. of this year, I'm giving, I'm up. giving up because it's just not worth... Yep. the effort yeah I and and, and i was like oh that's such a good example of the like having the wrong focus yeah you know like being so fixated on whether you can or can't do this thing that, um, that yeah. you forfeit all of that work that you've done um when if you were just focusing on how amazing the work is that you're doing mm -hmm. the goal will come yeah. you know it's like anything it's yeah. it's like it's like it's like anything in life and that is literally um and and then they uh, signed off by saying i guess failure because that's like, I'm okay with that because failure is a part of life, right? Mm. And I'm like, far out. So is learning mm. from your well, mistakes, at, you know, look, and giving look, up is like... Richie, have you still got that picture of Lockie doing the front splits on your computer? Uh, um, look, you've got to have a look. Um, we've got, uh, I mean, look at Lockie. He just got his front splits for the first time at age 44 after training with us for four and a half years. Yeah. Imagine he gave up after a year of, oh, this is crap i can't get any better at this you know it's the but journey it's, it's it's i guess it's easier for our tribe here because they're in this culture that really just supports turning up and doing the work you know and when you're out doing it on your own it's a little mm. bit harder and that's why it's so important like one of the things that um w w that rad didn't sort of um point out before with his with the training split that he's now uh producing this week that we're launching t i think today oh, we're going to get it up yeah, it's, it's going to go, up, go today. up today yeah. is the flexibility masterclass which is really version two of the mobility masterclass uh, but we've renamed our programs because of what we've learned over the last sort of five years we now know a lot more about what flexibility and mobility is and we sort of started kicking them off with what would you know be identifiable for people now we want to name them what they really are yeah. and so it might be a bit confusing for some of our tribe but bear with us as we go through this transition uh, but this program does everything that a good strength program does and one of the main things it does is it compensate it it, it 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 deploys the the concept of super compensation it allows the body to recover adequately between bouts of stimulus so that you continually make progress it treats flexibility training as a proper workout and it's not something that you uh you just sort of flout about with you know but the other cool thing is that it it um is designed completely in and of itself to do what we do which we probably people find the most revolutionary about the UMS is how we combine it with strength training. Because if you approach the two separately, you have to neglect one of them. It's just not possible to get, unless you are blessed with the ability to train twice a day, Look, like an it, hour, a couple of hours in the morning, a couple of hours in the evening. We shouldn't say it's not possible because there are people out there that do it, but they sacrifice a lot in other areas but of their life But most of them it. are fitness professionals. Yeah, most of them are fitness professionals. They don't have other jobs. Or they don't, um, they don't. Name They're me one career. person that does it that's not a fitness professional. I, I'm genuinely interested. I've seen, I, I've done workshops, Yanni, with people that, that, I mean, like, for example, Ido Portel's training, he does two, two sessions a day. Yeah. And we did that for a while. And there are people that are in his tribe and his culture that are very, very good that aren't fitness professionals. But I don't know what their circumstances are. And I know that when we tried it, even being fitness professionals, it, it just detracts from too many other things that we were trying to achieve in our life and you can't uh, I, th I love this saying you can't run towards something without running away from something else and if you're going to put two training sessions in one day and you're going to do that six days a week then you're man, neglecting something you, else in you're going to be neglecting <laughs> yeah. some other things in your life and we're not talking two 30 or 45 minute training sessions yeah, we're, we're talking two 90 to two 120 hour. minute yeah. training sessions here yeah like it is a massive commitment and we tried it and we did it for six months 
and the business was suffering yeah. too badly and, and relationships the stress and, relationships yeah. and the stress that came with it and we've found finances we found a way, found you, know, a way you sacrifice to get your financial health for your flexibility yeah. i don't know if that's a good idea and we found a way <laughs> to get similar results with doing it in one session yeah yeah, yeah absolutely absolutely so that's i think the the you know um I, I think that's something that you, you, you know people need to understand. Get like when if you if you truly want to get flexible, uh, or if you truly want to perform at your best, because we believe that true strength cannot be achieved in the absence of mobility. If your joints are fighting to get into deep positions, then you're either wearing them out or damaging them, or not really um, uh, achieving your full potential. I think. Um, but on the flip side. True flexibility cannot be achieved in the absence of strength, and uh, and and so and what what we mean by that is that you know if you're wanting to be functional, if you're wanting to be able to use your flexibility in the real world, if you want to run, jump, climb, sprint, change directions, and 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 minimize the risk and of injury. Yeah, even more than that, just like picking up things yeah, or like all you know, of that, general you know, life stuff. Yeah, if you're developing flexibility in a way that doesn't promote strength, then you, an end range strength, then you're, you're creating vulnerability, you know? So you want to have a program, whatever you do, you want to have a program that, uh, that takes that, but what, um, that, that does just, that, that does all that. Yeah, because just remember that like when muscles do get overloaded and they uh, tighten up, that's a protective mechanism. Like they're doing that because they know that it's when you go to full end range of something without control that that's when you know you, you're likely to get damaged to yeah, you know the yeah, joint structures yeah. or mm. you know your spinal cord or blood vessels mm. like the the spasm and tightness is protective so if you want to kind of override that protective mechanism then you're going to have to get your body to trust that you can control that range that you're working in so yeah it's yeah. really and, key and, and that what you guys either one of you just said that um said this then that is a really important thing to understand, which is an, another one of our breakthroughs that's included in the flexibility blueprint, which is that flexibility training has to be programmed. It, it can't just be that you say to yourself, I'm, I'm going to stretch five or six days a week and I'm just going to stretch. Like it, it has to be programmed. There has to be some serious structure put in place with it where you, you know, you have a, you, you understand what the end goal is. And then it's the same as strength training. It's exactly the same. Yeah. You can't, you can't expect to achieve greatness in the gym and forget even, I'm not even talking about like gymnastic, like Olympic level gymnast greatness. I'm, I'm talking about just, just achieving a good result, you know, getting up to, you know, let's talk about for um, the average person, if you could do your own body weight in a squat, you know, just under your own body weight in a bench press, like these are modest goals, but pretty big milestones for the average person right those things aren't likely going to happen from turning up with no plan mm. right? you got to have you got to have some sort of structure some sort yeah. of a plan you know yeah. some sort of a program split like in at the most basic level you say okay well today i'm going to do chest and back yeah and tomorrow like it's not just turn up and to, oh, I'm, I'm just going to stretch today yeah. yeah so just very quickly before we talk about what a delay period looks like for you in your training Let's just quickly talk about why the progress of flexibility training is not always as linear as strength training, uh, because it's something that does frustrate a lot of people and it can be really discouraging. And in my experience, for me, uh, I had some pretty severe injuries that I'd, I'd fallen off a horse as a kid. I'd done a bunch of pretty bad things to my body, which created a lot of what you could p possibly say restriction or roadblocks that that made it a little bit more hard for me to um uh, for my body to trust hamstring flexibility and things like that and, and also just an ingrained sense of vulnerability which is often what's you know one of the most important things to overcome when you absolutely when you yeah absolutely and that's what i, w I was going to finish on but you've yeah. dived there, there. So it's good no no no, it's I'm very good, good. <laughs> because of the the, 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 the central the pivotal role that the central nervous system and the brain has flexibility is, is is mostly occurring in the brain like we've talked about this earlier in the week the muscles have the ability to lengthen and contract uh, but that's controlled, it's dictated, it's governed by the brain. And that this is what people don't understand. You know, they go to, um, we did a whole show on this earlier, a whole podcast, uh, talking about the concept that there's this notion that the, the, the muscles are Play-Doh and you can just pull them out and stretch them. The more we stretch, the more the Play-Doh lengthens. Um, unfortunately, that's not what it's like. The, the, it's just not the way it works. It's, it's the brain adapting to the stimulus and being more and more comfortable with you going there. If it, if it senses vulnerability, 
mobility or if you overstretch and you cause pain, pain is a stimulus that is reinforcing that that's a bad thing to the brain, then it's going to stifle the process. And it's not only pain as well. Like there's a um, there's a little test with um, a physio assessment where you are basically checking for sort of shoulder instability and like a, a it, yeah, just basically an instability in the shoulder and it's called... Um, uh, apprehension and relocation test where you're basically just getting someone to go into like an end range sort of abduction external rotation and um, extension and even just kind of getting there you're basically looking for if, if people can do that or if they really jam up and their muscles kind of all contract at once to sort of hold it there and then the um, that's the apprehension test so you're seeing if they're apprehensive to go into there that position and then you place a hand on the front of their their shoulder just gentle sort of pressure which is kind of to um, you know, mimic the job of the rotator cuff muscles to keep that ball sort of centered in the middle of the socket. And then, oh, like, yeah, the, the test is it, it, they're positive if they suddenly have all this extra range. So those people who, you know, that has a big difference. Like, you know, you can get to that position, they lock up and they couldn't possibly go any further. But then as soon as you put like a, you know, a gentle but firm, uh, like hand on their shoulder, suddenly they're able to access all this range. So it's like, mm. you know, you, you're not doing this amazing sort of, um, it's they've magic. got they've, they've got the range they've got the range there, <laughs> but their their brain is just being like sensing that real apprehension, um, that yeah. instability there. So it's not only pain signals that stop it; it's it's also just an instability. Your your brain picks up on that and goes like, "No, nope, we're not doing that. Yeah. <laughs> we're not yeah. going there." Yeah. So. Now, before we dive into um, uh, what Rad's deload periods look like with stretching and how he uses both um, a, a reduced volume and intensity stretch and mobility. Let's just go through and quickly give some love to everyone on the live stream. Uh, yeah, I, f- I find it funny because Vinnie Brown said here, this is that's hilarious. Of all the stretches, my pike stretch has improved the most notably since I've started working with us uh, in reference to the fact that we get so much uh, hate about our loaded pike <laughs> stretching. This is exactly what we said uh, yesterday, Vinnie, to this gentleman as, as, as kindly and politely as humanly possible. You know, um, all the theory in the world uh, it, 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 there's always limitations to the to the research. Um, the, you know, the, there's 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 limitations to everything, and you can find arguments to support both quite easily. At the end of the day, you've also got to take into account, uh, and we like to say this all the time: science is really good, and research is really good. That becomes one tool that we use to to um, educate ourselves. The next tool that we use is our personal experience, the the experience we have training ourselves. And then finally, the third data point that we use at Unity Gym is the data point of our clients. Thousands of people around the world um, have also, if they've replicated the results that we're producing, uh, then we use all three of those data points to collectively create our programming. And um, unfortunately, when you get a keyboard warrior who just smashes you based on one data point and theory that they've read in one study or book, it's always really, really embarrassing because you're sort of like, well, show me the results that you've produced. For them, yeah. Yeah. We always say, okay, that's good. You've read a study, one study. Now show me the results that you've you've produced applying that study, you know? And it's, it's, you know, for someone like that, it's usually like, you know, they've had a past experience or they've heard that going into these positions under mm-hmm. load is, is really dangerous. But, you know, as they haven't seen the, the all the progressive steps, it gets the person up to yeah, that position. That's sure. why, you know, you, yeah. you get people the, jumping the, on and being like, oh, how could you possibly do that to your body? But in like, this instant, we always, they always, the best arguments always come, they, they end with quoting Stuart McGill. And I love the um, uh, what Coach Christopher Summers sa- says about Stuart McGill, how he's a proponent of neutral spine. And um, Christopher Summers is on uh, the London Reel in an interview saying, you know, what can you do with a neutral spine? He said, what, there's, he said in there's, athletics, no, there's no athletic um, activity that you can do with a neutral spine. Like, no matter what yeah. you do, moving around in the real world, you don't hold a neutral spine. You whether you're throwing you a ball, whether you're doing you swim, gymnastics, you whether you're you swimming. You gymnastics, your you know, spine, yeah. 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 And, and so why why are we so freaked out about taking the spine out of neut- n- the neutral position it, it, when we're training? It just yeah. doesn't make any sense, you know? Anyway, let's not yeah, go let's too far. Yeah, let's get derailed. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. So you've got to jump on the online coaching call after this. We're, we're, yeah, we're, that's we're right. Straight. Okay, so um, last five, uh, Lee Clemens, immediate gratification is on the rise. Patience, enjoy the process. Dave Clark is saying, it's these podcasts which help keep me motivated and consistently training. That's fantastic, so Dave. Do, yeah, 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 it's really, really 
really good. Jo- Joshua Charles Dawes is saying, morning, lads. Dirty bottle. Make sure, guys, there's a few people from the online coaching group here. Make sure you are geared up in about six so, minutes. We're going to be jumping yeah, over we, there. We the are going to have to wrap this show up in a couple of minutes. So let's let's um, wrap this up. Yeah. Okay, and D-Load. Just for those, the online coaching call, if people aren't familiar with that, uh, it's really fun. We've been doing it for the last few weeks and yep. basically helping people on the online coaching group um, as if you know we were their personal it's trainers, real hanging coaching. out with them. Yeah, yeah, so for those of you that are sub- that are subscribed to the UMS online coaching program, make sure you join in. We're going to yeah, be going. Get over so there. we do like uh, yeah, video analysis of you know people's posts. So if you are on the online coaching group, um, if you are part of the online coaching, get your make questions sure to get ready. Your, your videos ready so we yeah. can get started. Uh, Rad, what does your deload week look like? You have five minutes. Uh, basically, it is. Um, I basically just go into my deload week uh, where I'm I, I predominantly deload load strength training so i'm thinking of reducing the volume down to 40 percent of what i lift but increasing intensity where possible um and i just approach my stretching like it's just something that i do i see what feels right for me with zero goal of making progress with it i just basically want to try and you know because you like every if you've done real stretching you always feel like that first set you don't even have 50% of the range that you have on that last set, right? Like we all, you know, you warm yep. up as the workout goes on. I basically just approach my stretching where I try to just warm up through the workout to the point where I get to a decent range. But so, and then you don't do uh, more intense no, reps from that no, point. No. Okay, so we're it's still just, just key thing there is that he is still stretching during the deload week. Mm-hmm. He's not not yeah. doing anything at all. Yeah. He's warming up very progressively. Mm-hmm. Um, and then how do you use mobility during the deload period? Because I know mobility, that you use mobility, I do mobility a lot of mobility. So I really focus on mobility. So I use the 18 minute so, mobility so for, routine. First and foremost, just for those of you, who, for those of the listeners who don't listen to us all the time, the difference between mobility and flexibility? Flexibility is workouts that are done to increase your mobility. They're done at a high level intensity. They require recovery between sets. They require recovery between workouts before you do it again, just like strength training. Mobility is an umbrella term for anything that takes your joint through full range of motion. So my mobility, there's so many different ways you can do mobility, but the mobility that I like to do is in what we have as the 18 minute mobility routine, because it should be something that can be done in a relatively short amount of time. It shouldn't take too long. It should be something that if you've only got 20 minutes and you don't want to train today, but you can get it done and you can mobilize the whole body, every single joint, not just the hips, not just the shoulders. And my mobility routine, um, finishes so everything warms me up it warms all my joints up and then it finishes with the main gymnastics movements which is what we work on in the flexibility masterclass which is the pike the pancake the front splits the middle splits and the back bridge so that i basically just take my i warm my body up and get ready and then i just take it to its full range of motion in those positions that i'm trying to get better in and it makes sure that not only do you not go backwards with your flexibility training, because you we've just talked about that you're only doing certain flexibility movements once a week, so you're not going backwards, but what it also does is it solidifies the gains that you've made in your flexibility training. It solidifies them in the central nervous system. It reminds the body that this is the new norm. You don't need to go back to where we were before. Like we worked to get this new range yesterday. We don't need to go back to that. We can stay here and then we can move forward from here. And, and it's and, really- And mobility training is gentle, you would say? Very gentle. Yep. And Way, you should like, like not a, feel a strain doing mobility training. No, you can feel discomfort, but not strain. You yep. should not feel like you need to recover from mobility. You should finish a mobility training session and feel like you could go straight into strength training. Yep. Like it, like it would, like you feel good, you feel ready, you feel charged. Not flexibility is totally different like you can do a set of flexibility training and feel like you need to like rest for a couple of minutes before you go at it again you know awesome yeah i think that's awesome. all we got time yeah for, that's right? it yeah. guys we're going to bring this one in for a landing remember if you're interested if you have been doing the mobility masterclass in the past uh for all of you ums online coaching guys you're going to get this in your um in your dashboard anyway so jump over and check out the new uh flexibility masterclass it's an awesome program give us some feedback Uh, This is what Rad's doing right now. For everybody else who's not in the UMS online coaching um, tribe, then, yeah, this is a great opportunity to level up your flexibility. Probably the best one all year. And uh, if you've done the Mobility Masterclass in the past, this is version two. It's going to 
basically sort of, I guess, um, I, well, it's everything that is it you know, superseding that yeah, program. Yeah, it, yeah, is, yeah, it, it is. is. If you look, if you've got it, and, and you've got, the, you've got to remember the mobility masterclass got us to a certain point. Yep. Version two evolution. got us further. Yeah, this yeah. is the evolution. So that's the best yeah. way to describe it's it. It's going live in a sec. It'll be linked in my email coming up, and uh, yeah, we're we're going to be flash uh, launching it at a uh, massive discount for the next seventy two hours over the weekend. So grab that program. Give us some feedback. Give us some love. Uh, have a great weekend, everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Ciao. Health is about performance, not just body image. You better be willing to accept what you're going to have to do to get there. We'll start focusing on movement goals, strength goals, flexibility goals. When you nail that skill, it's there forever. The body image goal doesn't get you that far. It's the consistency and frequency that's going to get you there. It's not the intensity. There's no shortcuts to mastery and movement. Destination doesn't change overnight, but your direction will. The gym is not the place to beat up the body that you hate. It's the place to build the body that you love. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image.